David Brucey here with a new episode of Soloing Secrets, and this is Roy Buchanan, yet another absolute legend of the electric guitar. And Roy's career started somewhere around 1955, and his life tragically ended in 1988. So depending on your age and awareness of music and guitar history, you may not know Roy's name or his music, but I bet you know some of the players he directly influenced. Players like David Gilmore, Jeff Beck, what Arlen Roth, Danny Gatton, Gary Moore, there's a whole bunch of, you know, very famous, legendary guitarists that absolutely loved Roy Buchanan. So this episode's going to dive into some of his licks and phrasing and some of his tricks and stuff. Very exciting and dynamic player, and like I said, an absolute legend of the guitar. So much like we've done in other episodes of Soloing Secrets, it's always a good idea to take a look at a player's influences. You know, when you're studying a certain guitarist, Look for the musicians and guitarists that influence them, and that will reveal little areas of their playing, you know, licks and phrases or maybe chords and, you know, rhythm work and stuff like that. And here's an image featuring some of Roy Buchanan's elusive influences. So I always found it really interesting that Jeff Beck dedicated his cover of Stevie Wonder's Cause We Ended As Lovers to Roy Buchanan. And then the following year, Roy Buchanan released an album called A Street Called Straight, and he dedicated a song, uh, My Friend Jeff, to Jeff Beck. So there was definitely this mutual admiration between those great legends of the guitar. And then as far as Roy's elusive soloing secrets, you know, some of the things he typically liked to add to his licks and solos and fills and ideas. Uh, and there's a lot, because definitely Roy was a very dynamic player. And that's an important key word right there, dynamics, because he played with lots of dyna dynamics. You know, sometimes it was screaming loud and a pinch harmonic or something. And other times it was whisper quiet, almost like he was picking with a feather. So this, you know, light and dark and loud and soft kind of dynamic, you know, play in his music, really expressive and interesting. And then here's an image with some of his, you know, soloing secrets. The music and ideas in this episode came from Roy's first two albums, the self-titled, you know, debut Roy Buchanan, the second album, which is called Second Album, and also his fourth album, That's What I'm Here For. And uh, he had, you know, basically 12 studio albums and a bunch of live albums. The live album Livestock is awesome. That was also a big influence on Jeff Beck. But, you know, 12 studio albums, a bunch of live albums and compilations and stuff. But here's an image featuring, you know, the album covers as far as where the music and ideas in this episode came from. So with the opening, that's the song My Baby Says She's Gonna Leave Me, and that came from the album That's What I'm Here For, and it's the super funked out track, you know, killer song, love the tune. And that opening riff is interesting on its own, like this, in the key of E. <laughs> doing this interesting stuff with that open A, kind of sneaking that open A in like this. set of strings and then do it in A right here. Back to E. And he starts doing this octave and it's moving up chromatically, you know, from G all the way up to B right there like this. distinctly come in very bright and pronounced and that's very typical of his lead style and you hear this real bright and snappy you know picking close to the bridge also kind of a 
those little slight pinch harmonics in there too. He didn't necessarily do that in that song, but that is a trademark, you know, Roby Cannonism as far as picking those little slight whistlers is what Roy called them. Like those little slight pinch harmonics, and um, from there I just played a lot of Roy Buchanan licks and ideas, like that frantic open string lick, and then like the tone knob manipulation, which we're going to talk about that later in this episode. But this stuff, volume knob manipulation and stuff, you know, great dynamic guitarist for sure. And a lot of those ideas are overlooked these days because, like I mentioned earlier. Depending on your age and awareness of music, you may not even know Roy's name, but you know his bag of tricks because everybody stole those ideas from Roy Buchanan. Okay, next up is some melodic phrasing from The Messiah Will Come Again, which is from the first, you know, Roy Buchanan album, which is on the wall right there. And this is really basic, and the organ supplying, the chord progression, and then you hear Roy come in playing, you know, melodically. And the chords, you know, you got A minor, a couple passes of that A minor, and then you hear it shift to E7 behind Roy, and you distinctly hear Roy play this. And I kind of added those open strings so you could hear, like that first line, he really just played this. But I added that open A so you could hear it against A. And really play with that phrasing, you know, put some energy and, and emotion in there dig in and kind of give it some feeling or some energy. And then when you hear it move to E, and you're grabbing that B, A, G, and kind of milking that G to E. So it's a really simple, basic phrase, but it's giving you a chance to kind of explore that emotive, you know, feeling and, and you know, playing with the... Uh, get in there you know pick you know maybe a little more expressively and fret and dig in a little bit more and just see what happens All right, next up are some licks and phrases from the song Cajun and this also came from the first Roy Buchanan album and this you know first bend that you hear during the solo distinctly has one of his whistlers or pinch harmonic you know something like this <laughs> That. So definitely that real distinct kind of choked squealy sound. Noticeably a Telecaster bridge position, super squawky and squealy, but there's a, a whistler right there. And you might need to play with where you're actually hitting that pinch harmonic. I'm definitely having some luck right about there. Interesting lick after that. Uh, and then, something like that. Really simple riff, but I like it. idea from Cajun and this is a multi-position kind of shifting idea kind of a trademark from Roy style like this Something like that. so we're starting way up here with this F to G and then this B flat to C and then Kind of shift into this G. And grab that B flat to C right there. And then start that bend again. And then here. And then do it on the G right there too. And then, you know, interesting little lick 
and I like that kind of shifting and moving around. <laughs> Okay, up next is the finger twister, and this is a hybrid pick bending idea that moves along the fretboard. Definitely, you know, Roy Buchanan's specialty here. And he was a master of finding these weird and unusual ways of twisting his licks and phrases around. You know, maybe at the end of a solo or a lick, or at the beginning somewhere or in the middle. And definitely a big influence on Jeff Beck, because Jeff definitely started doing that in his music a lot too. But this idea is something like this. <laughs> One more time. So right there you can see we're in the box. And there I'm hybrid picking you know, two notes on the B string. That first note, that D. And then also that B right there. And then do the similar thing right there in the next position of E minor pentatonic. Right, this. Move to this. That last one right there is the next you know position of E minor pentatonic, and right there you're grabbing that e, uh, A, and then you're gonna grab this G, bend that to uh, A, release it, and then play the open E at the end. And that's the part I want you to pay attention to at the end. And that would basically set Roy up to do something with that open string next, possibly, or he might just end it like that. of those kind of licks just kind of blurry and moving around and uh you know definitely was not afraid to move around the fretboard roy definitely was an adventurer on the neck another common area in roy's playing style were his rakes you know raking into a series of notes and definitely one of the most famous areas in his entire discography featuring these rakes is near the end of his classic sweet dreams you know from the first album and it's almost you know like there's only about 30 seconds or 40 seconds left of the song but if you cruise through the song near the end, you'll hear this. One more time. So right there, kind of like a G major. And he's basically raking into every single note. He's overdoing it, but it's very expressive right there, especially during that moment of the song. But you hear him rake into that D. And think of B.B. King and Stevie Ray Vaughan, Albert King, there's a lot of famous rakers out there, but we're raking into that D note, so you want to mute the low E and A into that fretted D there on the D string on the 12th fret. So you're just hearing that kind of percussive noise or muted you know, noise before the note, and then do the same thing on that E, and then F sharp, G, A, B, C, E, E, and then he's going to target this F sharp, and then he bends that up a half step to G, and you definitely want to rake that final bend too. Now you might be sitting there thinking, well that's easy, but actually raking is kind of hard because you have to dampen and mute the strings to do it properly. And that's a lot of raking all in a row right there. So that'll definitely test your ability and, you know, raking technique, I guess. All right, next up is the song Filthy Teddy. And this came from the second album. And this features some of his really expressive uh, tone knob manipulation. And Roy was definitely a pioneer of emulating a wah pedal using his tone knob. And he actually started doing this before the wah pedal was even, you know, created. And I did read somewhere that when he finally saw Jimi Hendrix live, he was disappointed because he saw Jimi using a foot-controlled wah pedal. And he had pioneered, you know, tone knob manipulation for these wah effects. But Filthy Teddy is just skanky and funky, really cool song. But it opens like this, really unusual, like this. <laughs> What you're doing in the beginning he's bending this d up a half step to e flat and he's also playing with the tone knob there and then you do it again with the c bend that to d and it definitely you can definitely hear like a little bit of that wah kind of flavor Moves into that 
G7 riff. And that's an interesting song because when he starts his solo, literally Roy plays almost the majority of his entire solo right here out of the Albert King box, technically. <laughs> expressive phrasing and it's just four notes maybe five notes if you count that D right there check out filthy Teddy it's just rocking out and then that really cool and that really cool like wah manipulation with the tone knob right there so cool also from the second album on the song five string blues you'll hear volume knob and tone knob manipulation from Roy something like this So he starts with this high bend and does a volume swell, you know, that G to A. And then you distinctly hear the C to D bend, and he's doing this frantic vibrato, and he's also playing with the volume knob. Like this real scary kind of sound. And then you hear him play with the tone knob, too, to get that wah flavor. And then you distinctly hear this kind of blues like after that but that's really interesting to hear him just completely you know playing with the controls the knobs the volume and tone controls and then just everything else frantically you know that happening on the fretboard too just a master guitarist but the last example here came from five string blues once again and this is a really basic idea but it's showing you how much you know Roy could variate and just mutate a lick and he's really just playing with three notes you know F G and kind of bending up to A but it's all in the picking and the handling as far as making it sound like this. It's real frantic and kind of chirpy, but really cool. You know, something like that. And it's all just, you know, kind of spastic. You know, but it's just all that handling too, just the way it sounds. It just, you know, catches your attention. Like what is going on right there? Because it, it just sounds crazy. Check out the five string blues and you'll hear some phrasing like that where it's just frantic. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Soloing Secrets with Roy Buchanan. Definitely a very important and legendary pioneer of the guitar. Very influential. You know, his followers and fans were big names. And uh, that usually reveals something. You know, like if you notice legendary guitarists talking about some guitarist, there's usually a reason because they know, you know, what's good or what influenced them. And it's always a good idea to check those players out. So if one of your favorite guitarists starts mentioning a certain player and you haven't heard that player before, dive into that player. And if you'd like to learn more about Roy Buchanan, I highly recommend the book, American Axe. And this definitely got into the trenches as far as his life and his albums and touring and also the end too, a very sad story. So if you'd like to learn more about him and kind of what happened, you know, in 1988, highly recommend this book for sure. It'll entertain you and definitely you know, kind of inspire you to check out more of his music and more about him. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.